data collection, processing, and analysis. In this video, we're going to talk about data collection tools and methods, data processing, and analysis. There are many different methods of data collection, including household surveys, including baseline and line assessments, post distribution monitoring surveys, etc. Market surveys and price monitoring, observation using a checklist, on site monitoring, focus group discussions, indices, risk log tables, complaint and feedback mechanism, secondary information, joint assessments, real time evaluation, etc. Key informant interviews, market information systems project produce information from internal processes, FSPs and private sector produce information, checklist. Most of these methods and tools are not CVA specific. They are part of a wider monitoring toolbox that can be employed. Think about which tools and methods might be more CVA specific, such as data produced by financial service providers and where CVA would need to be integrated into existing tools. Data collection is increasingly done using electronic software and devices. This may include elements of monitoring, which are CVA specific, such as e-voucher platforms, which can allow the direct collection and analysis of expenditure data. However, much of the software and devices used to support data collection will apply regardless of modality. For example, applications like ODK, Magpie, Kobo. Increases in the use of remote monitoring methods is also likely to drive even greater reliance on the use of digital and tech-based data collection and sharing. The use of digital platforms and devices for monitoring can bring many advantages. But as with any form of data collection, any associated data management risks to do with which data is collected and how it is stored and shared need to be planned for and mitigation measures put in place. Roles and responsibilities. There are many ways in which data is gathered to be used in monitoring and evaluation. With CVA, there are often important roles for departments that may not have played a significant role in monitoring interventions using other modalities, such as in-kind. You've done your distributions. The finance department may handle information about which recipients have not received their payments and are likely to be the ones doing the payment reconciliation. There may be a temporary team devoted to collecting data, such as post-distribution monitoring surveys, or this may be done by one of your own internal teams. The logistics and supply team might be monitoring their suppliers, and they may also collect prices and other relevant data from markets and from vendors. The program team might also be monitoring the market situation to see if the market is able to deliver the program objectives as anticipated. There may be some distribution issues that need to be resolved, which might be done by the programs team or logistics and procurement team, depending on the type of issue. Security team can provide critical information on the security situation and may have access to more information that contributes to context and risk monitoring. Most of these things are happening concurrently and not in a linear way. So multiple teams may be doing all of these things all at once. Finally, you'll be looking at whether you're ready to deliver more distributions and what, if any. Program adjustments need to be made based on monitoring information. Different organizations are likely to divide duties and responsibilities differently. However this is done, 
It's important to keep several key issues in mind when developing a monitoring plan. Determine how you will engage affected communities and recipients in the process so that their perceptions are captured and they are not only sources of data, but can also reflect on results and analysis and support in identifying solutions to issues where relevant. Be clear on what needs to be monitored and the purpose and use of any data that is being collected. Only collect what will be used. Be aware that information needs to be shared with the right people in a timely manner to enable learning and decision making. If not, the data is not worth collecting and analyzing. Have a plan and allocation of responsibilities, not only for collecting the data, but also processing and analyzing. This includes the tool which will be used. For example, some digital solutions will combine processing and at least basic analysis in the software used for data collection and time required. In all cases, a data risk assessment should be done for the tools and methods that will be used and apply principles and guidance for responsible data management. Who are the right people to collect, process and analyze the information will vary based on data collection method and the information itself. It is essential that while different departments and staff might be responsible for collecting different sorts of data, that this is properly coordinated and aggregated, particularly at the point of analyzing the monitoring data. This would involve determining which person and or department is responsible for this consolidation and ensuring relevant analysis reach those who need it for decision making. Working together. It is valuable to also consider how organizations might work collaboratively to improve and harmonize monitoring of CVA and in general. This could apply at different stages in the project cycle and relate to design, such as monitoring frameworks and planning, collection and analysis, and use of monitoring data. The level or degree of collaboration can vary, from coordinating data collection to agreeing common indicators and tools, while retaining agency-specific data collection and analysis, through to having shared platforms and resources for data collection and analysis. The type of coordination and collaboration that occurs will obviously be shaped by the platform that exists. For example, Cash working groups are important forums through which to collaborate and coordinate on issues, including monitoring. This is a space where implementing agencies can harmonize tools and mechanisms. Harmonization enables comparison of the efficiency of different types of CVA intervention to understand regional differences and better assess the impact of programming. Working together, examples. Here are some examples of the shared meal mechanisms in consortia. IRC was the meal lead for the Lebanon Cash Consortium. Data collection involved using a common data platform and digital collection. Data collected can cover multiple sectors. Analysis was undertaken centrally by IRC and disseminated to all consortium partners. Analysis was undertaken centrally by IRC and disseminated to all consortium partners. Complaints and feedback received from the affected population were managed in the same way. This central approach improved the efficiency and speed of data analysis. As the ARC meal team are sector neutral, sector specific representatives are not automatically involved in data collection or analysis. Building and maintaining linkages between CVA, meal and sector specialists was therefore essential 
to ensure sector-specific findings were shared and utilized. The Cash Consortium in Malawi used a common complaints and feedback mechanism consisting of a common hotline. Information received was managed by a central team who would notify relevant agencies about complaints. The central team would also monitor whether resolutions had been reached and how long this took. This approach was found to work well. However, duplications of accountability efforts occurred when some agencies who had donor-funded activities falling outside of consortium activities but being implemented in the same geographical location as consortium activities were required to comply with additional donor accountability requirements. This limited the availability to efficiently use resources, human, financial, time. Making adjustments. How do we adjust based on information from the monitoring system? Once monitoring data is reported, if programmatic changes are necessary, who decides upon and who implements these changes? Identifying where these responsibilities lie should be done at the outset where possible to be able to ensure that reports and recommendations get to where they are needed. It can also be important to establish what level of flexibility there is to make adjustments to the program during implementation, which is likely to relate to factors such as donor requirements, timeframes, the operational model being used, the program design, and the urgency and priority of the issues found. Let's look at some examples. Firstly, what if the monitoring data reveals that CVA is not meeting the needs as identified in the needs assessment and is meeting other needs instead, as defined by the recipient. In this case, try to determine if this is because the initial needs assessment wasn't accurate or if the needs have since changed or possibly a combination. Also, what this means in terms of appropriateness and sufficiency of the assistance provided. As a course of action, you may choose to revisit the needs assessment and response analysis to see if they need to be redone. You might also need to determine what additional supplies, training or services are needed in addition to or instead of CVA. Secondly, what if you are monitoring results either from exit or PDM surveys or via a complaint and feedback mechanism, highlight that some recipients are being asked to pay access fee to certain agents of the service provider in order to receive their transfers. This would require immediate follow-up action in coordination with the payment service provider to find solutions to prevent further incidents. Thank you for listening.